hello and uh, welcome all of you student <coughs> let's continue with our uh, unit 6 and the uh, remaining part from the unit 6 so the last time we have started discussion regarding the phases of uh, optimization in that already we have seen the optimization generally get divided into the two categories like the local optimization and the global optimization <coughs> and last time related with the uh, local optimization and the dag based local optimization that all the points with the example we have studied so today we'll discuss the details regarding the global optimization and some uh, techniques which is required to perform the uh, global optimization so as already we know the optimization we perform in the synthesis phase that is in back end of the compiler and optimization is nothing but the one of the code transformation or uh, modification or rearrangement technique where we try to improve the intermediate code by making it uh, consume the less or the fewer resources like cpu memory so that our program can run faster also we can define the opti code optimization in another way code optimization any method of code modification to improve the code quality and the efficiency a program may be optimized or modify so that it becomes smaller in the size it can consume the less memory and it can execute more rapidly or perform the input output operation faster so for that purpose we need to perform the different uh, code optimization okay and in order to perform the code optimization there are the various techniques available under the local optimization under the loop optimization that already we have discussed so what is the objective what is the need of performing the code optimization is nothing but what the main objective behind the code optimization that optimization must be correct and it must it must not change the final meaning of the program and uh, performing the optimization it must increase the speed and performance of the program and also the compilation time should not get increase understood so for that purpose we perform the optimization and uh, how through the different techniques we can perform the optimization that already in the previous some lectures we have discussed so optimization is nothing but the rearrangement in the code modification in the code without uh, changing the meaning of the program and we perform it so that uh, our program can become uh, memory efficient uh, as well as our program can become time efficient and program <coughs> will get executed faster so accordingly also we have discussed uh, types of the code optimization based on when the code uh, code get actually optimized okay if the code get optimized uh, before the final target code generation then we call that particular code as a machine independent optimization so this code optimization phase try to improve the intermediate code to get better target code as output the part of the intermediate code which is change or the transform here does not involve cpu register or the memory location or the instruction set of the machine so during this uh, optimization we don't have to think about the cpu register instruction memory etc etc that is the reason it is referred as a machine independent optimization and second category there already we have studied machine dependent optimization so this is the optimization which is done after the target code generated okay and uh, uh, while you are doing the machine dependent optimization we have to think about the machine cpu registers their instruction set memory etc etc understood so uh, uh, the machine dependent optimization is generally the optional okay but machine independent option and generally uh, get performed through the compiler so that our code can be improved and uh, execution speed of the program can be get improved okay so this already last time also i have discussed i just have a recap of that now in the phases of the optimization already we have started discussion there are the two main phases the local optimization phase and the uh, global optimization phase now what exactly is the local optimization that already last time we have discussed when the optimization get performed within the basic block only in order to perform the optimization or the code optimization there is a no need to interact with the another basic block then that kind of optimization we called as a local optimization which is get performed within a basic block only for example this example last time also i told you x equal to 10 a equal to b plus c z equal to x plus y now here you can see here x equal to 10 a equal to b plus c instead of writing the x we have just written the 10 on the place of x that is called as a constant propagation code optimization here we don't have to interact with another basic block within a single basic block only we have performed the optimization that is the reason it is referred as a local code optimization okay now regarding this example also last time i have told you 
just uh, for your understanding purpose i am recapping it global optimization so as uh, compare with the uh, local optimization global optimization is slightly opposite to that so here changing changes or the transformation or modifications are done in the large program segment which include function procedures and the loops so in general we can say global optimization generally get performed between the basic blocks what between the basic blocks means when you do the modification and if during that modification if you have to interact with the multiple basic blocks okay then that particular optimization is called as a global optimization so in that case you can see that is the reason we have called here global optimization as a inter block optimization whereas the local optimization as a intra block optimization okay and that example also i told you these are the some basic block 1 2 3 4 okay now in this basic block you can see where the optimization can be done so x and y y values are declared here so that value we can replace here instead of writing the x and y as it is that is called as a global constant propagation means this constant value we are writing in place of the variable instead of writing the variable itself understood so this is the uh, optimized code in the basic block like you can see here we have replaced the x and y with the 10 and 0 so that is called as a global constant propagation now you know to perform this you can see we are interacting in the basic block 4 basic block 4 need to interact with the basic block 1 understood basic block 4 need to refer the basic block 1 so this is this is the inter block communication this is the inter block interaction uh, you know to do the modification in the code you know to do the changes in the code and this inter block modification is considered as a or it is called as a global optimization where the i have already mentioned the global optimization generally get performed between the basic blocks okay so this is just a sample example but now you know to do this kind of modification changes there is a need of two important techniques related with the global optimization which are that the control flow analysis and the control flow graph and data flow analysis okay so control flow analysis and the data flow analysis these are the two important techniques which are required to perform the global optimization this is a very important point all of you should keep in mind okay you know to do this kind of optimization two important techniques need to be understand in that first one is what control flow analysis and second is the data flow analysis so regarding the control flow analysis and the control graph control flow graph already uh, we have discussed the things but just i will have the recap for that and today we'll discuss the in detail about the data flow analysis okay so you know to understand the control flow analysis first you need to understand what ex uh, what exactly how to consider the control flow graph and what exactly mean by the control flow analysis you know to understand that you need to understand about the basic blocks okay because using the basic block only we can construct the control flow graph okay and what is the basic block that last time also i told you so basic block is nothing but the sequence of consecutive statement which are always executed in the sequence without halt or branching so particular sequence particular sequence of consecutive statement can form the basic block only when when there is a no halt or jumping instruction in between them when some sequence of statement get executed sequentially okay when some sequence of consecutive statement get executed sequentially then that particular block of statement we consider as a forming the basic block okay for example here is the example a is equal to b plus c plus d so for that three address code can be generated like this okay now we can see here when the first instruction is executed all now after the first instruction next instruction will be executed then third instruction will be executed so this instruction will be executed sequentially without any halt or branching or the jumping there is a no jumping from that like after the first instruction third will be executed nothing like there in, in this example so this particular sequence of statement forming the one particular basic block okay so same thing i have mentioned when the first instruction is executed all the instruction in same block, basic block will be executed in their sequence of appearance without losing the flow of control of the program so flow of control is not getting changed here after the one instruction next is executing after the next its next instruction is executing the way you are looking at these uh, statements the way these statements are appearing in the same order these statements are getting executed that is the reason this state sequence of statements are eligible to form the basic block and that is the reason you can call this as a one basic block okay so these are the characteristic of basic block which already last time also we have discussed till i am repeating here they do not contain any kind of jump statement in the 
the sequence of statement there should not be any jump statement then only they can form the basic block there should not be any possibility of branching or getting halt in the middle like getting halting here and directly getting to the fourth or fifth or sixth instruction all the statement execute in the same order as they appearing they do not lose the flow of control of the program if all these properties are being satisfied by, by some sequence of statement then we can call that sequence of statement as a basic block okay now uh, so this example already i told you so this is the sequence of statement which is forming the basic block because here all the statements are executed in the sequence one after the another that is the reason they form the basic block okay then now uh, also example you can see which which sequence of statement cannot form the basic block for example this is the example given if a less than b then one else zero and for this we have this sequence of code as a intermediate code now you can see after the one first instruction directly you are jumping to the fourth instruction understood there is a possibility of directly jumping to the fourth instruction or after the four after the first instruction after the first instruction you may go to the second then after the second you may go to the third but after the third there is a possibility that they will directly go to the fifth instruction by excluding the fourth means you can see the statement do not executing in the sequence one after the other that is the reason this is not forming the basic block okay this also in detail last time already i told okay now how the basic blocks are forming for that purpose the partition algorithm is utilized and regarding the partition algorithm last time also i explain you so there are the some rules of formation of basic block so i am just recapping it so first rule is what determining the leaders so which statement can form the leaders so following statement of the code are called as a leaders every first statement of the code is called as a leaders statement that is target of the conditional or unconditional go to statement that is also forming the leader okay and statement that immediately appear after the go to statement that is also eligible to form the leader statement so first rule is regarding the determining the leader statement okay and second rule is related with the determining the basic block so all the statement that follow the leader including the leader till the next leader appear forms the one particular basic block the first statement of the code is called as a first leader the block containing the first leader is called as a initial block okay so all the statement that follow the leader including the leader statement till the next leader that is the rule for forming the particular one basic block okay that last time with example we have seen so in a, here also i am repeating the example consider the following source code for the dot product of two vectors a and b of length 10 now this is the code is given now directly intermediate code is not given this is the general code given now for this code first you need to generate the intermediate code that last time i told you how to generate the intermediate code etc okay now this is the intermediate code as a three address code now in this state in this uh, set of uh, statement you can see the, this is the first statement always from the leader statement so we can call this as a leader statement and next target of the conditional unconditional go to is also forming the leader statement so target of only go to is here so go to 3 so this statement is also forming the leader statement so this one and this one are the two leader statement here i am mentioning statement number statement number 1 and statement number 3 are the leader statement understood so this is the first rule we have apply here and we have got the leader statement then next you have to apply the rules to determine the basic block so starting from this leader statement up to the this leader statement one basic block can be formed as as per the our rule so this is the basic block one okay and starting from this leader statement until the next leader statement not find so until this we don't find any leader statement so this is the second basic block form okay so in this way the basic block has to be formed so same i have shown here uh, shown here this is the sequence of intermediate code and from this we are forming the two basic block basic block one and the basic block two understood so basic block b1 contain the statement 1 to 2 and the basic block b2 contain the statement 1 to uh, sorry 3 to 2 so this is the way of forming the basic block and then after formation of basic block the control flow graph can be constructed okay so for the previous basic block this is the control flow graph constructed okay now what is the control flow graph it is the one kind of directed graph okay and what exactly it means for what purpose we are constructing it we are constructing it to show how the control is moving from one particular basic block to another basic block understood the same thing i have mentioned the flow graph is the directed graph it contain the flow of control information for the set of basic block 
so control from b1 from control from b1 where the control from b1 is going control from b1 is going to the b2 how you are how you can tell me that how we can determine that using this arrow using this direct arrow we can understand the control from b1 is going to the b2 then control from b2 is going to the b2 itself that we can understand from this directed arrow so a control flow graph is used to show or depict how the program control is being passing from one particular basic block to the another basic block so this is basically utilized for the loop optimization and it is also utilized for the global optimization okay so that is the control flow graph and the control flow analysis so from this from this control flow graph we can analyze the things we can analyze the things related with the how the control is flowing or moving from one basic block to the another basic block okay so the block b1 is the initial node and block b2 immediately follow the b1 so from the b1 to the b2 there is a edge this is the edge so control is flowing from b1 to the b2 that analysis we can do here the target of jump from the last statement of b2 that is from this statement is the first statement of b2 is to this statement so from b2 to b2 there is a edge so there is a loop b2 to b2 so we can analyze the thing that there is a, a loop from the b2 to the b2 itself okay and uh, the control is flowing from b2 to the b2 itself again uh, uh, control uh, flow analysis we can do here that is what b2 is a successor of b1 and b1 is a predecessor of the b2 okay so this kind of control flow analysis information we can generate with the help of the control flow graph okay then now next we have to uh, now as i told you in the uh, previous slide in order to do the global optimization we have to uh, we need to uh, understand the two important techniques in that first one is the data flow graph and the data flow analysis that we are just we have discussed data flow graph which you have to construct from the basic block and second important technique that we need to understand to do the global optimization that is the data flow analysis okay here sorry first one is a sorry i just first one is a what we have discussed is the control flow graph and the control flow analysis okay control flow graph and the control flow analysis and second important technique which you required to do the global optimization that is the data flow analysis okay now control flow graph or we can construct as well as we can do the control flow analysis using the basic block okay then using the control flow graph and the control flow analysis now we can do the data flow analysis okay then now we have to discuss what is exactly the data flow analysis uh, what are the techniques to perform the uh, data flow analysis which are the properties of the uh, data flow analysis and how the data flow analysis can help us to do the global optimization that thing we will discuss so so from the name only you can understand what exactly mean by the data flow analysis so it is nothing but the gathering the information related with the how the data is flowing from one particular part of the program to the another part of the program or gathering the information analyzing the things related with how the data is flowing from one particular basic block to the another basic block okay so same thing i have mentioned it is the analysis of data in control flow graph the control flow graph we have seen so in that analysis of flow of data how the data is moving from one basic block to the another basic block that is the analysis that determines the information regarding the definition and use of data in the program okay so uh, if you see the this is this as our control flow graph now in this control flow graph doing the doing the analysis rela related with the data flow means how the data is flowing from one particular basic block to the another basic block where the definition of certain data is being mentioned where the reference of certain data is being done so that analysis related with the data in the control flow graph that being everything is being referred as what the data flow analysis that everything being referred as what the data flow analysis okay so the same thing it is being mentioned here it is the analysis of flow of data in the control flow graph the analysis that is the analysis that determines information regarding the definition use of data in the program okay so with the help of this analysis optimization can be done with the help of the control flow analysis with the help of the knowledge about the how the data is uh, flowing from one basic block to the another basic block uh, where the definition of data is being mentioned 
where the data is being referred so this that is the data flow analysis from all these things the global optimization can be done easily okay so in general it is process in which values are computed using the data flow analysis okay the data flow property represent information which can be used for the optimization so there are the various properties of the data flow okay there are the various properties of the data flow that we are going to study in the next session so with the help of that properties of the data flow uh, the inform from that information we can easily do the uh, global optimization okay so that is the definition of data flow analysis which is what it is the analysis of data in the control flow graph it means it is a gathering or analyzing that uh, information regarding definition of data use of data in the program how the data is moving from one part of the program to the another part of program that is how the data is moving from one basic block to the another basic block so that we are going to uh, now this is the just a definition next now next uh, you know to do the data flow analysis first we need to understand some basic terminologies okay now what are that terminologies as i said data flow analysis is nothing but the uh, gathering the information related with the uh, uh, where the definition of data is being mentioned where the data is referred where the computation of data is done so all this information is being nothing but the called as a data flow analysis understood and from where you can gather this information from where you can gather this information so that all the analysis we can do in the control flow graph okay so here also we have taken one control flow graph you know to understand the basic terminologies related with the uh, data flow analysis so three basic terminologies we need to understand which generally asked in the exams also in that first terminology is what definition point now what is the definition point in the control flow graph this is the control flow graph as you can see this is the control flow graph for some example some basic blocks are given here like this is a basic block this is also the basic block this is this is this all the basic blocks so uh, combining the different basic block and showing the control from one basic block to the another basic block that is considered as our control flow graph okay now what is the definition point here a point in the program containing some definition that is called as a definition point now in this program in this uh, control flow graph this is the definition point okay l1 as a one basic block a equal to 2 so here we have defined something what we have defined we have defined a and we have assigned the value 2 to the a that is the reason it is called as a definition point a point in the program containing some definition so a here there is a we have defined the a and we have assigned the value 2 to the a that is the reason here it is referred as a definition point okay then next is the reference point now what is the reference point a point in the program containing a reference to a data item a point in the program containing a reference to a data item now see this is another next basic block in this basic block here the reference is made to the variable a b now we can see reference is made to the variable a because here to the b you have assigned the a to the b you have assigned the a so here you have made the reference to the variable a which is being defined in the basic block b1 understood and that is the reason this point is called as what that is the reason this point is called as what reference point or uh, some point in the program uh, some point in the program containing a reference to a data item that is called as a reference point so a particular program as you know a particular program that program for that program what we do on that program we perform the lexical analysis syntax analysis semantic analysis then we generate the intermediate code for that then from that intermediate code we generate we do the uh, we do the optimization on that uh, intermediate code now when we are doing the optimization we can create the basic block from that intermediate code okay from that basic block we can generate the control flow graph okay and in that control flow graph we can have this kind of reference point we can represent this kind of things you know to uh, do the optimization in the better way for that purpose these techniques are necessary data flow analysis and the control flow analysis okay so that is our second point here reference point a point in the program containing a reference to a data point here a point is here where a is getting reference that is the reason here it is considered as a reference point okay then next we have evaluation point what 
evolution point. A point in the program containing evolution of expression, uh, some particular point in the program containing the evolution of expression. Now, where the evolution, uh, uh, computation of expression or evolution of expression is done is evolution is done here. No, here, no, here, no. Is the evolution is done here? No. Some computation in the sense what some operation is getting performed. Something is getting evaluated. So here evolution is done. What evaluation is done? X into Y, this evaluation is done here. So that is the reason this point is called as evolution point. Some operation is getting performed. That is the reason this is referred as the evolution point. A point in the program containing, what a point in the program containing evolution of expression, that point is called as what the evolution point. And here in the control flow graph, Here in the control flow graph, you can you can easily see that evaluation point. Okay. Now, so these are the basic terminology that we need to understand, you know, to understand the concept of data flow analysis. Okay. So data flow analysis is nothing but what? Determining all these kind of things in the control flow graph. That is simply the data flow analysis. Where data is defined, where data is referenced, where data is evaluated. These are all the information that you can gather through the control flow graph that is the simple concept of data flow analysis okay now next important thing that we should discuss in order to do the global optimization and these things uh, will help us to do the global optimization that is the data flow properties under the data flow analysis okay now what is the data flow which are the different data flow properties that we are to discuss next okay so in that first data flow property, we have the available expression. Now, what do you mean by the available expression? This is the sample control flow graph we have taken for some example. Okay, now what is the available expression in that? Now, first you need to understand theoretically what is exactly the available expression. To which expression you can call the available expression that you need to understand first. Okay. A expression is said to be available at a program point X if and only if along the path it is reaching to the X. In another way, you can define it. A expression, for example, a expression A plus B is said to be available at point X in the program if none of the operands get modified before they are used. What? A expression A plus B is said to be available at point some x, if none of the operands get modified before they are used. None of the operand means until the this expression a plus b is uh, available at this point, whenever it is getting available at this point x, the neither a should be get modified, neither b should be get modified. Then and then only, we can say at this point x in the program, a plus b is available. When we can say a plus b available at x, when a plus b will not be modified until it is get utilized at this point x. Understood. The same thing I have mentioned here. A expression a plus b is said to be available if none of the operand gets modified before they are used. A expression is said to be available at a program point x if and if along that path it is reaching to the x. Means it is. I will, it is, it is available at that particular point X. Okay. So let's see the example. Now here L1 equal to four into I. And this is the one basic log. This is another basic log. This is another basic. Log. Now here, what is said expression four into I is available for the basic block B2 and B3. What is being said? This expression four into I is available for B2 and B3. Now, why it is being said it is available for B1, B2, and B3? Because between when it is reaching, when it is going from B1 to the next block, it is not getting modified here in between somewhere here. This expression 4 into i is not getting modified. Understood. That is the reason we can say it is available at the point B2. And in the similar way, when it is going to the B3, somewhere between B1 and B3, it is also not getting modified. That is the reason we can say it is available at this point. Understood. But when it is going from B1 to the B3, and suppose there is some one basic block available here, 
and in that basic block value of i is getting changed like i equal to i plus 3 just i am writing writing it for the understanding now here i value is getting changed then if i value is getting changed here then you cannot say the particular expression 4 into i is available here because when it is when this expression going from b1 to the b3 its operand should not be get changed means neither 4 should not be get changed neither i value should not be get changed if i value get changed then we cannot say the expression 4 into i is available at the b3 or even if it is get changed somewhere here then you cannot say the expression 4 into i is available at the b3 so 4 into i must reach to the b2 or b3 without modifying the value of i then and then only you can say the 4 into i is available for the particular next part of the program that is the b2 and the b3 the same thing we have written in the definition instead of a plus b here we have the 4 into i so you can define it like a 4 into i is said to be available at b2 and b3 if none of the operand gets modified before they are used none of the operand neither 4 should get modified neither i should get modified until the 4 into i is reaching to the b2 or 4 into i reaching to the b3 then and then only you can call this 4 into i as a available expression available expression for b2 and b3 same thing i have mentioned a expression is is said to be available at the program point x you can call the program point this as x1 or program point this as x2 a where expression is said to be available at the program point x as x1 or x2 if and only if along the path along this path it is reaching to the x it is reaching to the x without modifying what it is reaching to the x without modifying so here 4 into i is reaching to the b2 4 into i reaching to the b3 without modifying that is the reason here it is said 4 into i is available for the basic block b2 and b3 so that is the uh, thing or the concept of available expression i hope all of you understood okay now what is the advantage of this advantage is what it is it is used to eliminate the common sub expression what it is used to eliminate the common sub expression so how it can be used to eliminate the common sub expression now here common sub expression is eliminated here you can see understood because here instead of 4 into i l1 is written okay instead of 4 into i l1 is written now here also instead of this 4 into i you can write the l1 if you write l1 instead of 4 into i that will be considered as a elimination of common sub expression understood and how you can do that you can do that because you know that expression 4 into i is available at the b2 and it is available at the b3 so you know its availability you know until it is reaching to the b3 or b2 it is not getting modified so which expression you can call the common sub expression the expression which is getting computed more than once the expression which is computed more than once that is uh, we can call the common sub expression so this is the 4 into i this is a 4 into i so 4 into i is getting computed more than once so that is the reason you can call this as a you can call this as a common sub expression and when you can eliminate these you can eliminate these when you know that the value of 4 and i is not getting changed when the 4 into i is reaching when 4 into i is coming from b1 to the b3 and how you can determine value of 4 and i is not get modified so when compiler know that the 4 into i is available at the b3 then from that availability you can easily determine that value of 4 and i is not changed and from that availability of expression the elimination of common sub expression can be done and here you can write l2 equal to l1 because you know the availability of expression 4 into i at the b3 why how you know what is the concept of available expression that already you know the expression a plus b is said to be available at the point if none of the operand get modified before they are used and that is the property required for common sub expression elimination okay okay that is the property required for the common sub expression elimination when you can eliminate the common sub expression when that 
operands of sub expression not get modified in between then that particular expression you can easily eliminate and that understanding you can have from the availability of expression because concept of the availability of expression says what a expression is said to be available at a program point x if along the path it is reaching to x without modifying without modifying its operand so that is the reason it is being said it is advantageous for what purpose to eliminate the common sub expression so you can eliminate here common sub expression because you know the 4 into i is available at the point b3 4 into i is available at the b3 and 4 into i is a common sub expression okay then next important point here we have that is the reaching definition next property reaching definition first theoretically you need to understand what it is what is exactly the concept of reaching definition okay a definition d a definition d is reaches a point x in the program if there is a path from d to x if there is a path from d to x in which d is not killed and not redefined what a definition d is a reaches a definition d a definition d is reaches a point x if there is a path from d to x in which d is not killed a definition d like this reaches to a point x if there is a path from d to x and in which d is not killed or not defined then that is considered as a reaching definition take the example here d1 equal to x equal to 4 this is a one basic log d2 d2 as a x equal to x plus 2 this is a one basic another basic log and d3 equal to d3 as a y equal to x plus 2 this is another basic log now what is said here see d1 is a reaching definition d1 is reaching definition for b2 d1 is reaching definition for b2 but not for b3 now what is the reason behind that reason is what it is getting killed by d2 it is getting killed by d2 in the sense the value of x is getting modified at the d2 that is the reason that is the reason d1 is not reaching definition for d3 let's see here now in the d1 definition what you have defined x equal to 4 in the basic block d1 now next direction is to the basic block b2 where you have defined the d2 where x is equal to x plus 2 is defined what is defined x is equal to x plus 2 now means what here value of this x will be what value of this x will be 6 value of this x will be 6 but the the x which is present at the b1 its value was what 4 so that 4 is get utilized here that is the reason you can say d1 is reaching definition for b2 the x equal to 4 is not getting killed until it is reaching to the d2 or x equal to 4 is not getting redefined until it is reaching to the d2 but x equal to 4 is getting killed or is getting redefined until it reaches to the d3 because this x value is what this x value is the 6 this x value is not 4 this x value is what 6 so value of this x from d1 to the d3 getting killed when you can say it is getting killed when x equal to 4 is not remain 4 x equal to 4 become the x equal to 6 then in that case you can so you can say this x value is getting redefined means this x is getting killed at the point d2 because when the value of x is getting modified at the point d2 so this x value getting modified at the d2 that is the reason you can say this d1 is not reaching definition for d3 but it is reaching definition for d2 because d in the d1 whatever the value of x is defined the same value you are utilizing utilizing here but at the d1 what is the value of x is defined that you cannot utilize here because here which value you are utilizing you are utilizing the x equal to 6 understood so that is the concept of reaching definition i hope you are understood okay now what is its advantage its advantage is what it can be it is easily utilized for constant propagation optimization now you already know constant propagation optimize it is one of the optimization technique okay constant propagation is one of the code optimization technique understood 
now how the reaching definition can help us now reaching definition can easily help us because the constant which are declare here for the x okay you can propagate it up to the d2 only okay you cannot propagate it to the d3 okay why you cannot propagate it to the d3 because it is getting modified here understood so from this reaching definition from this reaching definition a constant and variable propagation can easily done understood because from the reaching definition we are getting the idea d1 is reaching to the d2 but d1 is not reaching to the d3 understood means constant propagation can perform only between b1 and b2 constant propagation cannot be performed between b1 and b3 okay as here this is a global optimization day if you are if you are performing the constant propagation here if you are performing the constant propagation between b1 and b3 now you are interacting with the two basic blocks so this is a inter basic block communication that is the called as a global optimization you can do okay and this global optimization after the global optimization now how you can do the global optimization from the reaching definition what is the reaching definition reaching definition says that this x value that is the 4 can we get utilized here instead of writing x this x value is not getting changed until it is reaching to the this point b2 and so from this you can do the global optimization so i will do the global optimization for this here like so here you can mention it like this d1 equal to d1 as x equal to 4 this is the one basic block then next basic block you can now this is a b1 next basic block you can mention it like this d2 as x equal to 4 plus 2 means you are propagating the which constant 4 you are propagating here which constant you are propagating 4 so when you can propagate the constant when you know that this 4 is not getting changed until it is reaching to the b2 and how you can know that you can know it from the reaching definition function understood and that is the reason it is advantageous in which optimization constant propagation or constant variable propagation understood so that is the advantage of reaching definition property of the data flow analysis and that is the reason i said in order to do the global optimization the control flow graph and the data flow analysis can be very useful okay because in the previous technique in the available ex available expression helping us to do the common sub expression emulation reaching definition helping us to do the constant propagation okay let's see the last property of the uh, data flow analysis which is the important one okay and last property is what live variable what last property is of the live variable now first you need to understand what is the live variable concept okay a variable is said to be live at some point p a variable is said to be live at the some point p if from p to end of the variable from p to the end the variable from p to the end of the variable is used before it is redefined else it um it becomes dead a variable a variable is said to be live at program point p if from p if from p to the end of that variable it is used from p to the end the variable is used before it is redefined else we it become dead let's see the definition on once again a variable is said to be live if you call the some if you call the variable as a a this variable is said to be live at some program point p if from this if from this program point p to the end if if for the program point p to the end the variable is used before it is redefined if that variable a is used before it is redefined till this point then that variable a is called as a live at this point in at this point for example if you call as a p1 okay if it is if it is get redefined in some between then it become dead okay let's see in the example here. and then we will apply the definition once again to the example this is the control flow graph is given 
in this control crop this is the b1 b2 b3 b4 and the b5 okay in this each block some uh, some definition you can see now in this block what is being mentioned a is live at b1 b3 b4 what a is live at the b1 b3 b4 but it is not live at the b5 or it is get killed at the b5 why it is so let's see what is said a is live at the block b1 here a is live it is live at the b3 it is also live at the b4 okay but it is not live at the b5 now what why we can say it is live at the b4 let's see now let's apply the definition of live variable to this example now a variable which is our variable a variable is a our variable a is live at some point p which is live at this point b4 if from b4 to the end variable if from b4 means if it if from this particular point to the end means to the end in the sense to the b5 the variable is used before it is redefined and now at this point b4 a is utilized before this a is reaching is reaching to this point b5 a is utilized here that is the reason a is live here that is the reason a is live here okay now why we are saying it is getting dead here because the value of a is getting modified here what is the value of a 4 now this 4 here the this 4 value is getting utilized that is the reason it is said that this a is live here but this a is not live here because this a value is getting modified here now what value of this a become here that is become c plus u means this c is 7 and here it will become a plus b means it will become 4 plus 5 9 means u value become 9 yes u value become 9 so here c plus u 7 plus 9 16 here a value become 16 that is the reason this a this a let me do it again this a is live at this point it is also live at this point it is also live at this point because in between this is not get redefined it is live at this point because it is get utilized here but it is dead at this point because it is getting redefined here it is getting redefined here it is getting here it is being defined as a 4 here it is value become 16 understood that is the reason it is said a is live at the point b1 b3 b4 but getting killed at the b5 same definition i have written a variable a is said to be live at some point b4 b2 or b3 if if from p to the end of if if from p now point p you can consider b4 as a p point to the end variable if from p to the end if from p to the end in the sense from p now here from b4 to the b5 variable is used before it is redefined so yes it is utilized at the b4 before it is redefined but it is getting redefined at the b5 that's why it will become dead here and it is live here understood that is the definition of live variable so here a is considered as a live variable because a is said to be live at the point b4 b3 b2 if from b2 b3 b4 to the end to the end the variable is utilized so it is utilized in the b4 even if it is not utilized b2 b3 the value of a is still available here but it is utilized here that is we can say it is live at the b4 and it is live because it is getting utilized before it is getting redefined here it is getting redefined here understood because its value of a is 4 here and it is 16 here that is the reason 4 is getting utilized here not the 16 that is the reason it is live here but it is dead here because this value is getting changed at this point here it is 4 here value of a is 16 as the point at the point it is getting redefined the previous value of a is getting killed understood at the point it is get redefined here its value is getting killed understood 
now its advantage so where it can be advantages in case of global optimization it is used to do the dead code elimination so dead code elimination is one of the global optimization technique as you know so it is used to do the dead code elimination so live variable property can help us to do the dead code elimination now how it can be help us to do the dead code elimination yes you can see here okay now here you uh, the point you know that <coughs> a is live at the b4 b3 b2 okay but it is get keyed at the b5 now add for the basic block b5 for the basic block b5 this is nothing but the dead code or this a equal to 4 is nothing but the dead code for the basic block b5 because how you can determine it because you can determine it because at until this point b4 a is live because a is getting utilized here but can this a is getting utilized here no that is the reason for basic block b5 a is a considered as a this a is considered as a dead code and this cannot this can be eliminated this can be eliminated after the basic block b5 by the compiler understood the value of this a can be eliminated because it is not going to be utilized further further which is value which value is getting utilized this a is getting utilized not this that is the reason you can eliminate this a understood so that is the reason it is mentioned it is used to do the dead code elimination because once the once because once this a is get once this a is getting redefined at this point okay this a is become the dead code and this can be eliminated once you know that this a is not live at this point this a is not live at this point it is live up to this point then this a become the dead code and it can be easily eliminated so from the live variable you can get the idea up to the which point variable is live and up at at which point it consider as a dead from that you can easily do the dead code elimination so that is the live variable and list a variable is said to be live at some point p if from p to the end the variable is used before it is redefined else it will become so yes before it is redefined at this point it is get utilized here that is the reason up to this point it is said as a live okay so that is the concept of uh, live variable okay so from these three properties like available expression using the available expression you can do the elimination of common sub expression using the reaching definition you can do the constant propagation using the live variable analysis you can do the dead code elimination so using these properties of the data flow you can do the code optimization that is considered as a global code optimization okay now here last example i am taking regarding the global core optimization and this as a global common sub expression elimination this as what global common sub expression elimination now we will try to apply the our uh, property of the we will try to apply here our property of the available expression now this is the this is the control flow graph before code optimization and this is the control flow graph after the code optimization okay let's see this is the basic block b1 you can call this as a b2 and this as a b3 okay b1 b2 and b3 okay now in the b1 what is written i equal to j and a equal to 4 into i in the b2 i equal to i plus 1 b equal to 4 into i and in the c 4 into i now can you tell me which is the available expression here now available can you call the 4 into i as available expression yes 4 into i is available expression now as per the definition of available expression you can see what definition we have seen A expression is said to be available if none of the operand gets modified before they are utilized so same definition can we apply here a variable uh, expression is said to be available at some point p if it is not get modified until it reaches to that point so here which is our available expression 4 into i is available expression and it is available at which point suppose this is a b1 this is b2 and this is b3 so 4 into i is available at the b2 and 4 into i is available at the b3 because you can see nowhere the some okay okay here 
let's see here there is a there is a some okay jumbling happening here let's see 4 into i can you tell me 4 into i is available at the both the basic block b2 and b3 this is a b1 okay if you consider this as a b2 and this is b3 so now 4 into i is available for b2 no it is not available for the b2 okay why it is not available for the b2 yes why cannot why we can say it is not available for the b2 now here a equal to 4 into i okay and uh, here you can see i equal to i plus 1 okay here value of i is getting change okay here value of i is getting change here here value of i is what j here why what you are changing you are doing change as the i equal to i plus 1 okay value of i is getting change understood so here this 4 into i is not this 4 into i so that is the reason you cannot say this 4 into i is available for b2 but this 4 into i is available for b3 because it is directly you are you can see here directly to the b3 that is the reason now how code optimization we can do now we know the availability of expression we know this 4 into i is uh, is available for b3 but it is not available for b2 why it is not available for b2 because it is getting modified here okay but it is available for b3 in this direction yes so that is the reason we can do the optimization like this here for this a equal to 4 into i we use the temporary variable t t equal to 4 into i and then you can see in the b3 block this is our b3 block in the b3 block instead of using the 4 into i directly you are utilizing the t what you are utilizing the t understood here what changes you can do you are writing i equal to i plus 1 as it is then you are uh, using the variable t here okay uh, t as a 4 into i and uh, then instead of using the 4 into i here you are utilizing the t instead of using the 4 into because here you are uh, assigning the 4 into i to here you are utilizing the temporary variable and to that temporary variable you are assigning the 4 into i so for this b you can directly write the t understood okay because uh, no, even it even if you don't do this it doesn't matter but here in the b3 block the code optimization can do now you know to do this code optimization you need to interact with the b1 you know to do the code optimization in the b3 you know to interact with the b1 because here in the b1 uh, you are utilizing temporary variable you are assigning this value of 4 into i to the temporary variable and instead of recomputing it again at this point which is being done here you are directly utilizing as a t because 4 into i is available expression for b3 and that is the reason here you can remove this common sub expression you can remove this common sub expression because this 4 into i is available for b3 understood as per the our definition of available expression what is it is saying a expression is said to be available at a program point x if along the path it is reaching to x or expression a plus b is said to be available at point x or p if none of the operand gets modified before they are used okay now here you can see in this example when when this 4 into i is going from this direction to this block and from this direction to this block now here this value of i is getting change here this value of i is getting change here but in the in this direction the value of i is not getting change that is the reason it is available at this point but it is not available at this point who 4 into i is not available at this point so we can do the optimization between these two blocks you can remove this and instead of that you can write t so this is nothing but the common sub expression elimination that is global common sub expression elimination why it is called as a global common sub expression elimination because while doing this optimization you have to interact with the two basic blocks this basic block and the this basic block understood okay so this 4 into i is a available expression for this block but it is not available expression for this block because because reason is what for this block the i is value getting change but here directly you are getting the 
control from this block to the this block directly that is the reason this i values this 4 into i and in that i values remaining same but here in this block i until the program control reaches to this point this i value getting changed understood so that is the reason you can do the optimization between these two block this block and the this block okay so that is the global common sub expression and you know to do that you can simply utilize the concept of available expression where the available expression concept is what the expression 4 into i is said to be available at this point because the value of i and 4 is remaining same here that is the reason here you are assigning the temporary variable to this expression and instead of writing the 4 into i here you are directly writing the t because 4 into i is remaining the operands value of 4 into i is remaining as it is here understood so recomputation of 4 into i is getting avoided understood so recomputation get avoided definitely the execution speed will get improved but that is not the case for here because here this i value is getting changed in this expression that is i plus 1 understood so that is all about the uh, global optimization and the different techniques that we need to uh, use to do the global optimization okay i hope all of you understood this point and uh, if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section okay thank you all of you